Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys uh, a full rundown of the upcoming major content patch for Battlegrounds. Now, there were some reveals, which hopefully you enjoyed, uh, some on my channel. Um, there were a lot of leaks and stuff early on for whatever reasons. I didn't want to cover the cards, uh, the new content, right as it was known, uh, because I was given a chance to actually play it. It was only for a few hours in the Buddies Battlegrounds event. Uh, Blizzard decided to invite me. I partnered up with uh, Jackie, uh, had a lot of fun. So I have some hands-on experience of the Buddy system, and I think it's really important to have that in regards to giving you guys uh, my actual take on how good the cards are, how good the patch is, and what we can expect in the uh, next little little while of Battlegrounds. Now, uh, on the flip side of that, it is a lot of content. It is a new patch. Uh, even though I have some experience, given the volume of content, it is still a very limited amount of experience. So am I going to get everything 100% correct? No, I will not. And that will be the fun in figuring out the new content and patch in the coming weeks. All right, let's get started. First off, we're going to go just quickly in the new updates. These are the official patch notes for patch 22.2. Uh, well, it's the Battleground stuff anyway. We're going to skip all the, all the rest. So Battlegrounds buddies are here. We're going to go over that pretty soon. A uh, really important part, the Battlegrounds armor system will be deactivated while we try out the new buddy system. And they plan on reactivating the armor system at a late, later patch when they've reassessed the power levels of the heroes with their new buddies. Now that sounds pretty good, but more on that soon enough. Hero selection is a little bit longer, so you can look, you can see the buddy that you are expected to get in the hero selection screen, so Blizzard has done a good job with the UI, giving us the information for the new content. Going to Tavern 5 costs 2 gold more, it costs 11 gold. Uh, this is pretty bizarre, because um, even though this alone sounds pretty good, um, you have to keep in mind that you can't actually have 11 gold. So there is zero circumstance where you can tavern up 2, 4, and 5. You can't sell that many minions because you can't get to 11 gold unless you're Galloix, unless you get like the pirate to discount it to 10. Also, leveling to 6 is now cheaper than leveling to 5. So this is a bizarre change, but you know what? Um, I'm still getting used to it. I will let you know how that works out. Okay, buddy system, how does it work? You will have this thing on the screen when you play Battlegrounds starting from uh, Tuesday. Tuesday is the big patch. I will be streaming all day. Uh, please uh, enjoy the all day stream. Come by, have a look. So uh, every battle's better with a buddy. Okay, we're gonna skip a good bit of that. Um, okay. So the buddy meter has two sections. Fill the first section to get one copy of your hero's buddy added to your hand. Fill the second section to get two more copies. Now, in my experience, and this is why I wanted to wait a little bit to actually do this video, in my experience, getting the two additional copies, which yes, it does give you a golden buddy if you still possess your original one, um, this takes a little bit longer than getting your first copy, but not twice as long. Okay, um, there are things that um, help you get your buddy. I think they, they say here, um, it fills up during the combat phase whenever you enter combat. So if you have nothing and lose as horribly as possible, you will still get a little bit of buddy meter. However, not a lot. Deal damage to enemies. There is no cap to this damage, but there is a cap to how much buddy meter you can get per turn. So if you have that super high attack chroma wing hitting for like 300, it's just going to be way overkill. But you will fill up that meter even if you lose badly. So that is pretty interesting. Pop divine shields or win or tie a combat phase. The win or tie a combat phase goes over the cap. So what that means is there's a cap for combat and there is the win or tie. So if, if you hit the cap but then lose, you actually get less than if you hit the cap and win or tie. Uh, you also get a small bonus each turn for how many minions you have at the start of combat. Um, I did not really get a good grasp for that one, so we'll see about that one. What does that mean? Well, it will be pretty interesting and I will get into why this is the case, but it does mean that because of the cap and because it's pretty easy to reach the cap, YOLO leveling is going to be really difficult because almost everyone in 
your Battlegrounds games is going to be hitting the buddy meter experience cap each round. So if you're losing really badly, even though you might have a massive power spike two turns later, for the two turns leading up to that turn, you will be below on buddy meter. And because, again, because the cap is easy to achieve, but not easy enough if you're YOLO leveling, um, you are actually highly incentivized to play mid-range battlegrounds, which is a bit lame in my opinion. And on top of that, you are highly incentivized into staying on Tavern 1 a long time. And we'll get into that uh, pretty soon as we go over the buddies. They have some new heroes, but we'll cover that. Um, uh, they changed the way a Battle Master is, is worded. Um, mm -mm -mm. Ysir is a little bit worse, but that's fine. Ysir is still going to be really, really good. George can Divine Shield minions in Bob's Tavern. You're like, well, why why would we want to do that? Uh, for example, um, you might want to hit it on an Amalgadon because if you give Amalgadon Divine Shield, Divine Shield is not an adaptation that can be rolled multiple times. So if Murlocs are not in your game, you can have a actually noticeably higher chance to adapt into Poisonous, for example, uh, which would be really, really good if you're playing George. Um, Alistraza, the odds for Tier 6 Dragons are no longer reduced. Um, this is a big deal because they were previously reduced by like 10x. That's why you never got Caligos from the Alistraza Hero Power. Now you do, but going to Tavern 5 costs 11 gold, so good luck with that one. That's going to be an interesting one. Nothing not saying is bad. It will just be very different. Okay, so now part two, we're going to go over all of the Battlegrounds buddies. This will be a bit of a longer video, but bear with me. I think it'll be worth your time because I doubt you're going to see uh, a more complete review out there for the time being. But again, we do have to go quickly through it because there's like tons of these. And we'll go over the new heroes as we encounter them. So the buddy is shown. This is the Hearthstone official website. Um, it was actually loading a bit slow, but I think it correctly loads and it has all the buddies now. Now this is not the golden buddy. The golden buddies are literally just twice the stats, twice the effect in almost every single case. I don't offhand remember any case that's any different. Now when we first look at these buddy cards, the important thing that you will notice is there is a tavern tier on this buddy card. So this does uh, signify a few things. The first thing it signifies is this is how much damage it will deal to your opponent if you win a combat. Fair enough. The other thing it signifies is how quickly your buddy meter fills. Now, again, because it's pretty easy to get the maximum experience every single turn, this means that a hero who has a Tavern 2 buddy will almost always get it faster than a hero that has a Tavern 3 buddy. And there are some Tavern 4 buddies as well. I don't believe there's any over 4. I think it's 2, 3, and 4. Now, with AFK, you're losing the first rounds really badly, so that's why AFK gets a Tavern to buddy because it kind of needs to catch up on the buddy meter because it will not get much at all or possibly any. I guess entering combat you get some. You'll get some on the first couple of rounds. All right, so now you guys know how buddies work. Let's quickly talk over um, how good the individual buddies might be. So AFK's buddy, at the end of your turn, give your tavern tier three minions plus one plus one. Is this good? Not really, but I think it will help you level aggressively. Um, I would even say that you can level to three, try to fill your board with threes, and then maybe even level a six. So it is not really too bad when you consider that it might just have a power level above the normal leveling curve. Now that is a guess. Okay, it's possible it will not be above a typical power curve, and AFK is one of the worst heroes in the game. That is totally possible, but I think it will be a little bit above. Alakir gets Spirit of Air. Death Rattle give a random friendly minion, Wind Fury, Divine Shield, and Taunt. Uh, it is also an elemental, and uh, the minion typing of the buddies is really important, and it is really important because if you land on a minion type that is not currently in your game, you can use Hamul, which is the Tavern 6 guy that refreshes your tavern with the most likely minion type that you have. So if elementals are banned and you play a Hamul with only this card as your minion types, or the majority, let's say, you will get only Amalgadons. How about that? Um, 
So it might not look like much, and truly it might not be very much, but getting six Amalgadons from one Hamul, if you plan the YOLO level and get the most out of this, it's a pretty interesting fact that I haven't seen too many people talk about, but you can bet it will be a large factor, because if Elementals are banned, Alakir is unbelievably good. Another thing you will notice about the buddies is that a lot of them have effects that happen in combat. You have to keep in mind that in Battlegrounds, anything that happens in combat does not stay on the minion for the next combat, except for Terragosa. So if dragons are in, a lot of buddies play very differently. This is no exception. Um, Spirit of Air might give the effect to Terragosa, or you can just give it through the Alakir Hero Power. But Alakir Hero Power is a bit of a unique thing. Um, so, yeah. I would say this buddy is overall quite weak, but if Elementals are banned, I would absolutely be on board for trying to high roll uh, the early Amalgadon Hamul refresh. Like it. Alastraza. So Alastraza is going to be a bit of a different hero. Oh, there it is. Um, so we don't know the actual power level of Alastraza, but uh, her card is a 5-3. It is also a dragon, which is pretty important, and adds a random dragon of your tavern tier to your hand. So um, I don't know when you're expected to get this, but if you level aggressively, it's probably around the time that you hit tavern 5. So tavern 5 dragons, you're looking at um, Murazond and Razor Gore. And an early Razor Gore, Alistraza, is really strong. So I have a feeling this is a pretty strong buddy. Arana. 5-4, no minion typing. After you play a minion, your next refresh costs zero. So that's kind of cool. Um, Arana doesn't do super well in winning combats at the start because the hero power of refreshing five times doesn't really kick in until most people already have their buddies. So she has kind of like a Tavern Tier 3.5 buddy. It's a bit weak. Um, refreshing like crazy is pretty good for mid-range strategies. For people that play like me, try to get that first place. This is a terrible buddy, but for people who just want to farm MMR, if you're playing like the elemental strategy or like low low tavern tier mechs, uh, this is probably a pretty good card. Um, again, just you're not expected to win if you're playing Arana, and her buddy continues to further that point. Rafam! I actually revealed Rafam myself. After you kill a second minion, each combat get a plain copy of it. I think this is quite good because this tavern three, Rafam is excellent. He's super strong in the early game, which means he will get one of, if not the first Tavern 3 buddies to activate. Uh, a lot of players will plan to give Rafam a bad minion for his hero power, but it's really hard to prevent Rafam from getting either the first or second kill on a good minion. So that I think that is going to be really strong. Also, around the time people get Tavern 3 buddies, a 6-6 six, six is an extremely high-statted card. So I think that's fantastic. Brucon. So this is one of the new heroes. Um, I don't know if I can show you guys the hero powers. Um, so you basically choose an effect and these effects are give four friendly minions death rattle summon one one elementals uh, left most minion doubled attack right most minion gets three health and taunt and the one down here that i can't quite scroll because of my current situation producing this video is uh deal one damage to five random enemy minions so overall uh, pretty weak and the spirit raptor after you call upon a new element this remembers it death rattle call upon those elements now you cannot use an effect a second time. This is a single trigger effect. Um, it will not do like five zap effects. It is a death rattle. And if it is your only death rattle, you can scale it with the monstrous macaw and it's pretty good with Baron. But all in all, I would just say it is a pretty mid tier power level. If games are exceptionally fast, which they might be, um, it'll be an okay hero, but I think he will struggle, and I think it is a pretty weak buddy. Cthune. After a different friendly minion gains stats, gain plus one, plus one, until your next turn. Yep. I think that is horrible. Absolutely horrible. 
Captain Yodora, at the end of your turn, give a random friendly golden minion, plus five, plus five. It is also a pirate. Uh, in my experience, and I do play Yodora quite a lot, Yodora is pretty good at menagerie builds, um, and pirates are not that easy to get good ones. With Yodora, the gold grubber is quite a good option, but I would say that defaulting with one of these is quite good as well. Basically, you have to think about it like... With Eudora, you level the Tavern 4 and then get to discover a 5-drop. If you discover a Light Fang, you have a Pirate, and usually the result of your first dig will have a minion type. So you have a Light Fang, a strong Pirate, you'll keep the whole game, and a usually strong card because it's golden to get it started. So that is pretty good. Uh, Eudora is not a great hero. This buddy doesn't look that good, but I believe it's highly synergistic with how Eudora is played, so I think that will put Eudora higher up in the rankings. Uh, this is Captain Hook Tusk, uh, Trash for Treasure. So basically after you remove one of your cards, um, instead of getting two options, you get three. That's basically pre-nerf Hook Tusk. I think this card is pretty bad, but... But... It is a Tavern 2 card, so you get it very early. Hook Tusk is very aggressive early on. Uh, very powerful here to stay on Tavern 1 for a while. And getting three options in games where there's tons of tokens will result in a lot more triples. So this card will not carry from its stats, but because of its effect, you should be able to Tavern up a bit more um, faster paced. Uh, and you will more likely get uh, token triples. So I think overall that really helps Hook Tusk win games. Uh, I think it is a pretty average buddy, but it is synergistic on one of the best heroes in the game. So that is also really relevant. Uh, so this is Carriel Rome. If you're not familiar, this hero is not ever worth playing. Um, they gave her a buddy that at the end of your turn give three random friendly minions plus one plus one. And I think it's a relevant time to discuss um, another aspect of this patch. They removed armor. The most armor you could have is 10. I don't know why they chose 10, because most heroes that were really, really bad had 10 armor. Like, if we go here, this is on Hearthstone Replay. Worst heroes in the game, you know? Uh, well, there's Carrigal Rome. Absolutely horrible. First place chance, 7% with Max. <laughs> Never, it's actually pretty good with Max. <laughs> Um, so Cariel Rome got a horrible buddy and lost 10 armor, while a lot of the really good heroes, like Hook Tusk, got pretty good buddies, and they didn't lose any armor because they didn't have any to begin with. Um, I'm not going to go over and compare this, uh, but you can go over it yourself and see, but you will notice that a lot of the best heroes in the game that did not have armor to begin with, so they didn't lose any armor, actually got really good buddies. And a lot of the worst heroes in the game that had upwards of 10 armor got some really crappy buddies. So yes, there is a massive power divide until they reintroduce the armor system. And I don't know how they're going to reintroduce the armor system with its old 10 armor cap. I think they'll have to shift that cap to like 20 or 30 to account for the additional difference in the power level of the buddies that they're introducing. So we'll see how that happens. And I do hope it happens fairly soon because I think the game will get pretty frustrating to play once people realize what the best uh, new heroes are, because I think they're going to be much better than the worst heroes. I think the divide between best and worst heroes is going to be larger than ever until they step in for balance changes and reintroducing the armor system. Okay, uh, move on. Uh, we did not experience Shanvala. Uh, they removed Shanvala and a couple other heroes because of bugs that they said, last minute bugs that they found. Um, so I don't have first hand experience with Shanvala, but Shanvala looks really good. Uh, so a Tavern 2 buddy, and Shanvala is not super great early on the board unless you get a lot of elementals, but I think it is actually going to be worth it to stay on Tavern 1 uh, in order to uh, try to get this to work. So the hero power for Shinvala is play three elementals, uh, get minus three uh, gold cost for Tavern Up. Uh, this is itself an elemental, so this is kind of worth an extra gold, if you may. It's a Tavern 2 elemental, so you get it very quickly. For Tavern 2 elementals, for ta Tavern 2 buddies, that is, 4-3 style line is very strong. And his ability is really strong. Bob always offers an extra frozen elemental whenever the Tavern is refreshed. That is unbelievable. So 
in my opinion um unfortunately uh, it looks like we will not be playing shinvala because of bugs hopefully it'll be fixed relatively soon and we can't play it but i think shinvala is the model for the buddy system how they should have done it for all the heroes obviously that's not really a realistic expectation but nevertheless um shinvala is a very fun hero to play but it is a really bad hero uh in terms of uh, averages and consistency and shinvala got a really good buddy so that is what I like to see, but unfortunately, there's not a lot of examples of that. There's more examples of Cookie the Cook, which is one of the best heroes in the game in this patch, had no armor to lose, and got an absolutely ludicrous buddy. Um, I would put Chef as one of the best buddies. Chef is extremely strong in the early game, one of the strongest heroes in the early game. He got a, a Tavern 2 buddy, so Chef will get his buddy as fast as anyone in the game that he's playing. It's a 2-5, which is an unbelievably strong stat line. It is a Murloc, but Cookie is not tied to Murlocs. He's not a Murloc hero. What that means is... If you get to Tavern 6 and play that Hamul I was talking about, if Murlocs are banned, you will indeed get six Amalgadons. Enjoy your first place victory. And trust me, Cook can already power level. His buddy, you can use your hero power an extra time each turn. So instead of getting one discovery every three turns, you will get... Um, let's do the math on this one. So you will get in two turns no in three turns you will get two yes in three turns you will get two so not not quite twice the frequency exactly but um i think it will create even more aggressive leveling curves uh tavern five costing two extra gold is going to be a speed bump for cookie uh cookie's gonna be one of the best heroes in the game if not the best hero in the game after buddies um uh, and again if you compare this to like what were we talking about like Carial rome like one of the worst heroes in in the game losing 10 armor and getting a terrible buddy versus one of the best heroes in the game getting a ludicrous buddy it's like okay all right so again it's gonna be very imbalanced until they step in daryl after you sell the minion gain plus one plus one um i don't play daryl anymore because it's super boring uh daryl is one of the best heroes in the game in recent times but at the same time he is one of the worst heroes for actually winning games out of all the heroes, not just the best, out of all the heroes, Daryl never gets first place. So this is, yeah, uh, more never get first place, but not bad. If this had a minion type, it would be different, but it does not. Death Speaker, Blackthorn. So he gets, uh, after you gain a blood gem, gain an extra one. Gaining blood gems is not minions getting them on themselves. So we're not talking about like Shargla effects because the blood gems are directly applied to the cards. We're talking about gaining them as in getting them to your hand. Now, uh, Death Speaker's hero power is you get two blood gems when you level up. This is a, a Tavern 3 buddy, so you get it pretty quickly. It is also a Quill Bore, which is very relevant, and a 3-6 stat line. It's a little bit weak, but if you're getting twice the blood gems, if you put a few blood gems on this guy, like if you put like four blood gems, he's a 7-10. A 7-10 is extremely strong in the early stages of the game, right? So uh, I would say that this is a pretty good buddy on a pretty, pretty decent hero. Uh, oh, if you're wondering, Deathwing is currently one of the worst heroes in the game. He is getting one of the worst buddies in the game and losing all of his armor. Uh, this is horrible. Uh, with Deathwing, it's just, it's just horrible. Don't, don't bother. Uh, Bran is getting Taunt, Death Rattle, Summon a Random Battle Cry Minion, and add a copy of it to your hand. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I think it helps Bran get triples and stuff, but this is not a buddy that you will keep very long. Um, it is a Tavern 2 buddy, so you will get the first and the second one fairly quickly. Um, so it's pretty good to get the build going. Um, certainly, just you, you don't keep this on the board too long. You really need, once you get the golden one, maybe keep it on the board like one turn and then sell it. You really have to expand your board to a full battle cry infused board get the most out of the brand side of the hero power um so don't go too crazy with that drektar is one of the new heroes uh his hero power is uh choose a friendly minion it copies the attack of your highest attack minion for next combat only it costs zero 
his buddy is avenge to give your minions plus one attack permanently so this strategy is only really good if you're playing like divine builds like mech builds and overall i think he's not a very good hero Edwin Van Cleef, after you buy a minion, gain plus one, plus one. It has no minion typing. It's Tavern 3. I think it's a little bit too slow. I think this is a weak hero getting a pretty weak buddy. I would not play that. Elise is a weak hero right now, but she's getting a fantastic buddy. And I did play this in the playtest that Blizzard um, uh, put on for us. So thank you for that once again. Um, at the start of your turn, get recruitment map and reduce the cost of your maps by one. Um, when you get this, the idea is that you want to level fairly quickly, but you also want to be pretty safe on the board while you pool maps and discount them down. So it's kind of an interesting play style where being greedy is really rewarded and it sets up situations for extreme situations to happen in the games that you play and uh, certainly puts a, a high power level increase on Elise over. I love it. One of the best examples of the buddy system. Forest Warden Obum. At the end of your turn, add a random minion to your uh, of your tavern tier to your hand. 7-6 is a good stat line, but tavern 4 buddies come in pretty slow, and Omu levels really quickly, so he builds his meter pretty slow. Omu is going to be one of the slowest to actually get his buddy. To get the golden buddy of the, is going to be really tough, but the payout is really high. So um, I think this is a little bit weak, but I could be wrong. The payout is high. And uh, in any case, I love it. I love it. You know, if, if with this buddy and this buddy system, Omu becomes one of the worst heroes in the game, I will be eager to try to play this every single time it's offered to me. Fungalmancer, Battle Cry. So this is a single effect. It is a Tavern 4, and Flurgle is not very good in the early game. Transform Minions and Bob's Tavern into Murlocs of the same Tavern tier. Um, the only redeeming quality of this is that uh, Tavern 4 and Tavern 6 uh, Murlocs uh, are, let me just say, insane. Uh, so Tavern 6 Murlocs, uh, just the Malgadon, actually. There are no other Tavern 6 Murlocs right now, anyway. And for Tavern 4, the only one is Primal Fin. So this card is really, really good, but the golden effect is not anything special. So you kind of want to sell this before you get your golden one, and you want to be on Tavern 6, and then you can siphon out some Amalgadons and some Primal Fin, and that would be really good, but yeah. I have a feeling by the time you do that, someone else is going to gonna do that through Hummel. Galakrond, uh, replace minions in Bob's Tavern with ones of a, a higher Tavern tier. Again, single effect, but it's a strong stat line for a Tavern 3 buddy of 5-7 is really good. Overall, I think this is a pretty weak buddy uh, because it just doesn't carry the hero enough. Galakrond's a pretty weak hero to begin with. Gale Wing, at the end of your turn, progress your flight path by one turn. So <clears throat> when I first saw this buddy, I thought it was completely insane, uh, but I did play with it, and I have to say that overall, it's just good. So why, why do I say it's just good? So normally, you progress your flight path one turn, and if you have this in play, it progresses your flight path two turns. That's double the effect. Crip, what are you talking about? That's insane. Tavern 2, buddy, 4, 3. Wow, so good, right? Well, listen. His hero powers are all odd numbers, right? So the, the first one to give attack is one turn, so this does nothing. Uh, his second hero power to generate a card is three turns. You can't, like, mid-turn use hero power. So what happens is with Flight Trainer is instead of it taking three turns, it takes two turns, which is, is pretty good, but it's not, like, super insane. And the Tavern Up discount, instead of it taking five turns, it takes three turns. Again, pretty good, but not, not crazy. Um, but that's fine, because Gilwing is one of the best heroes in the game prior to this patch. He's got no armor to lose, and he's got a Battlegrounds buddy. That's pretty good. George is getting Carl the Lost after you use your hero power. Give your Divine Shield minions plus two attack. I like it, but Carl has no minion typing. It's going to be tough to justify keeping him on the board very long, but who knows? There might be some interesting builds. I'm thinking Quillbores and Mechs that might actually keep him going. Graybo, whenever you summon a taunted minion, give it plus two, plus two. So instead of uh, Graybo uh, killing off like three players and then finishing fifth, he will kill off four players and finish fourth. I hate him. 
guff. Battlecry, refresh Bob's Tavern with a minion of each tavern tier. Yes, that is one through six. Wow, so good, right? Well, I think it's not that good. Guff is one of the worst heroes in the game prior to this patch. Uh, this is a beast, and if beasts are banned, you can get some Amalgadons using the Hamul in action. But Guff is all about getting minions early and investing your hero powers into their stats. So this is a Tavern 4 buddy with not particularly good stats. It is pretty tough to make this work. By the time that you're getting this, you probably have already invested a Tavern 1, 2, and 3, maybe even 4 minion. So the Baby Kodo is giving you a random 5 and a random 6, and that's it. That's not enough. Illidan. Wingman also gives immune while attacking for one attack only. Uh, that's really good. Basically, the, the start of game attack, they can't die. The golden version of this is it gives immune while attacking for two attacks. So what does that mean? Um, that means that if you have, like, Myxnas on either side of the board, uh, they do poisonous hits while not being able to die. And then if you have a taunt, they do the poisonous hits again when they attack in order, in their normal order after the fact. That's pretty wow factor. Um, I feel like Illidan is going to be one of the stronger heroes as a result of his buddy. But you have to keep in mind that uh, that's going to work best when Murlocs and Beasts are in because I think this is mostly abusing like the scam style builds with the poisonous mechanic. Prior to this, Illidan was mostly good with like death rattle builds with like Macaw and forcefully attacking first. Toki, discover a minion from a higher tavern tier. Single use. That's eh, pretty bad. Jandis, after you swap minions, give them stats equal to your tavern tier. And I'm guessing that you give them each stats. Uh, this should be pretty fun. Um, it's still going to be like once a turn, but it's going to be quite a lot of stats. I like the idea. It's a tavern 3, and Janus is pretty strong early. I think it might help Janus' power level significantly, and that is a big strength for this hero. So I think Janus will probably get a little bit stronger as a result of the buddy system. Keltas is one of the is buddy working. There you go. Is one of the heroes that is disabled because of bugs in the next patch. But again, I can't imagine it'll take too long to bring him back. Keltas right now is really bad. Uh, the buddy is a seven-five tavern four. After Verdant Spheres triggers, give your hand and board plus one plus one. That's pretty good. Uh, you can do that like every single turn. So if you get a golden version of this, it's plus two plus two. It doesn't have a minion typing, but I don't know. Maybe you can do it more than once a turn. There probably is a consistent strategy where you play a Light Fang-like low tavern tier divine build and just spam out minions. And honestly, the more I think about it, I think that's pretty good. Mookla gets Crazy Monkey. After you feed a minion a banana, give it plus one, plus one. But it's a 4-4, four, four, and it's a beast. So again, uh, King Mookla is not a beast synergy hero. Uh, Hamul shenanigans. Uh, and it really scales your hero power to the point where it's actually worth using. I think that's very good. Curtis gets after you buy a minion. Um, what? After you buy a minion, minions in Bob's Tavern have plus one, plus one this turn. It's a 5-3 for two, though. That's a tough one. I think it's not good enough, and I think Curtis is still really bad. Lich gets a 4-4 four, four on three. When your hero would take damage, this minion gets plus two, plus two instead. Okay, so that lets you spam out your hero powers. It grows this like crazy. It'll let you level like crazy. Um, this is just a fantastic hero that certainly fixes uh, the downsides of Lich. The thing is that the whole point of Lich is that it has an upside downside. I would rather they just make the upside higher rather than remove the downside. But, okay, I'll take it. Lord Baroff, after you play a gold coin, gain one gold this turn only. So it doubles the effect of your gold coin, but it has no minion typing. It's a Tavern 2 card at least. I think that'll be pretty good, but it won't change much. I don't think it's an above average power level buddy. Jaraxxus, 
Uh, a Taunted Demon 3-6 Death Rattle, add a random demon to your hand. I think that is worth playing. Jiraxis is typically very aggressive with demons early on. He's going to activate his buddy fairly quickly, and I think this is a pretty good card for obtaining triples and ending on um, Famished Felbats in the endgame. I think that's actually, the more I think about it, the more I like it. I didn't see anyone play Jiraxis in the playtest, but that seems really good to me. I like that. Maev Battlecry. So this is a single effect, single, well, double, because you get a golden version of it. Your next tier power makes the target golden and awaken one turn faster. It's also a 4-4, and it's also a tavern too. So that is that is fantastic. That is just absolutely crazy for Maev. Now, is it is it going to be good enough to raise Maev out of tier 4 heroes? Probably, but... Maybe in the tier 3 or tier 2. Malagos Arcane Alteration replaces minions with one tavern tier higher. It's also a 6-6 six, six on 3. Also, Malagos is really strong uh, early game. So you're going to activate this uh, very early in the tavern 3 uh, buddy system. This basically combines Malagos with Galakrond and it costs 0. The golden version of this is plus 2. This is crazy. Malagos is already one of the better heroes right now. Uh, I think he only has like two armor or something, so he doesn't lose much of armor. I think Malagos will be one of the best heroes in the game. Master Win, Power of the Storm offers three options instead of two, but it's a Tavern 2 buddy that's a 3-6. That's a pretty big deal. The stat line will let you level more aggressively, and you do get it early because Master Win usually stays on Tavern 1 for a long time. And I want to point out, that is typically how a lot of people will start playing. Staying on Tavern 1 is going to be full-on meta at every single um, uh, MMR level. Millhouse. Oh boy, Millhouse. After you buy a minion, add one of the same Tavern tier of Bob's Tavern. <laughs> so Millhouse right now is one of the best heroes in the game. He has no armor, so he's not losing any armor. And this might just be one of, if not the best buddies that they made. Millhouse buys cards for two. I explained this on stream, so I'll quickly explain it here. Millhouse's cards are effectively half price or better. So people think, well, no, Crip. If, you know, if something costs three, it costs two. That's not half price. What are you talking about, Crip? Okay. Well, let me insert some hard logic into your ears. Usually, most of the cards that you buy, you sell them back. So you really have to factor that in to the cost of a card. If a card costs three and you sell it back and you get one gold back, the card really costs two gold. With Millhouse, if the card costs two gold, but you sell it back for the same amount of one gold, the card actually costs one gold. So it's two gold for normal heroes and one gold for Millhouse. So Millhouse's cards actually are a 50% discount. But it's better than that because there's a lot of cards in the game that either spawn an extra card or generate an extra card into your hand. In which case, a normal player would pay one gold for those cards, paying three, getting back two. Millhouse would pay two, get back two. Sometimes three or four if you have Bran and whatnot, right? So actually, Millhouse's buying power is more than twice as effective as a normal hero. It is an unbelievably strong hero power. It's just that the re-rolling the tavern for two gold is an unbelievably bad downside. So it's like mega upside, mega downside. And Millhouse, on average, from that structure, is one of the best heroes in the game. They just deleted the downside. Okay, with Millhouse, you just go to like Tavern 6, you just buy up all the Tavern 6 minions. You literally just buy all of them. You literally just buy all of them. You're going to get all the Ragroses, all the Jins, um, all the all the Amalgadons, all the Shargles. <laughs> like, just buy all of them. It, this is unbelievable. I cannot believe they made this. I can't believe this is real. This is a Tavern 244. Okay, Millhouse is the strongest hero in the game up until like turn five. It's not gonna take him five turns to get this. <laughs> yeah, this, this is gonna get nerfed. Maleficent, 
This is a really cool. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, I did not see this played, though. Um, Death Rattle, deal four damage to an enemy minion. Repeat for each of your mechs that died this combat. So a gold one of this would have that effect done twice. Um, the idea that I'm thinking is that if you have, like, um, bombs with taunt but not divine shield and then this with taunt and divine shield it's highly likely the normal bombs will die first the other way to do that is if you have a golden bomb with taunt but not divine shield attacking first and then this with taunt and divine shield attacking second you can constantly spawn them through kangor's apprentice all in all really 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 cool stuff okay this is an insane hero power or insane buddy, at least in regards to doing cool stuff. Uh, how good it's going to be? I think it's going to be pretty good, but the cool factor really has me thinking and going. Uh, this is Mr. Bigglesworth. At the start of your turn, get a plain minion from your lowest health opponent's warband. Um, I've seen a few reviews. People think this card is not very good. Um, they're wrong. Uh, this card is very good. Um, so it's a Tavern 2, it's a 5-2, which means it's going to get a kill, um, which is really important because the cat, Bigglesworth, does a really crappy job of staying alive. So this helps you just take less damage, even if you're going to lose. And because it's a Tavern 2, and you usually play pretty conservatively early on if you're playing Bigglesworth, um, you're going to get this quickly. And on like turn 3, 4, 5, players usually have the same cards. They have like the token Murloc, they have the token Beast, they have the Micro Mummy, and they have the 2-2 two -two Reborn Taunt, okay? That set of cards is enormously popular. So if you are getting like cards from just random players, sometimes the same players again and again, you're going to have incredible value generation and you're gonna have incredible triple potential, okay? This card is fantastic fantastic for keeping Bigglesworth in the game. And honestly, that's the whole game. Because with Bigglesworth, you don't need a card that's going to help you get first place. Your hero power does that. What your hero power doesn't do is keep you alive. This is super insane for keeping you alive. So I think it complements the hero power massively. Bigglesworth should be fantastic. When you devour this, split its stats onto two extra minions. There you go. So you can buff this, but it's pretty hard to buff. Um, however, you can devour something onto it. So I think that's basically the best way to handle it. The way that I'm thinking is um, you play the Chroma Wing, which is the Tavern 113 Dragon. Each time you level up, you double its attack. Uh, you put as many stats on that as you can. Um, and you try to level up quickly to maybe even delay this from going off. You get to like Tavern 4 or 5, and then you put like a monstrous amount of stats onto this thing. And then you hope you stay alive until you get the golden one, because the golden one splits its stats into four other minions. Okay? Actually, it's two extra, so actually it'll be five. And if you do that, you basically have an instant completed build. How consistently can you do that? Well, watch the stream and find out. Nazoth uh, gets a baby Nazoth. Battle cry, make a friendly death rattle minion golden. So I guess you can target your regular one. Oh, no, you can't. The fish of Nazoth doesn't actually have death rattle by itself. Oh, interesting. Interesting. All in all, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think it'll make me more eager to play Nazoth because Nazoth is really cool when you have enormous death rattle synergy, and this helps you get there. Power level wise, pretty lukewarm, I imagine. Nas Dormu. Minions in Bob's Tavern have plus one plus one each time it was refreshed to this turn. And yes, if you do not freeze and get a new tavern when your turn starts, that counts as a refresh. So that means that even if you never refresh, Minions and Bob's Tavern have at least plus one, plus one. 
and it's not normal, so your first refresh costs zero. So you're just going to get a lot of stats on everything in Bob's Tavern, and you can do some really dumb stuff, which I did actually try, and I would say it was pretty successful. Uh, you can try to just have a lot of rerolls by pooling tokens and all that, and if you get a golden chromie, it's plus two, plus two for each of those triggers. You can get like plus 30, plus 30 on a, on a board and on on Bob's side of the tavern. That's very cool, but you do need a lot of planning. I think Nosdormu gets a huge power boost from this, but I think the experienced players are going to get more out of it than the average players. Overlord Sarfang is apparently a hero that exists. Uh, for the Horde also grants health. How about that? Um, I think it's plus two attack per turn. So like turn 10, it's like plus 20 attack. So this would be plus 20 plus 20 to a targeted minion. Wait, that's actually really good. I like it. I like it. I think it's very good. Patches, 4-4, four, four, pirate on 3. Give a minion plus 1 plus 1 for each pirate you played this game. Uh, it's a battle cry that you often can delay. It's plus 2 plus 2 uh, when you get the golden version. And if you have Bran... It's plus two, plus two a lot of times. And it's to a minion. It's not necessarily to a pirate. So it allows you to put it on like a cleave or something. I don't know just how strong that will be, but I imagine it'll be pretty damn strong. Patches is ridiculously strong up until the late game stage of a game. That stage is going to be shortened because of the massive power creep that Buddy is introduced into the game mode overall. And I think we will see patches builds that are not so much a bunch of pirates and will be more like a bunch of pirates and a really, really, really large cleave minion. Something like that. And uh, I hate it. Please remove patches. Thank you. Patchwork. Weebomination. It's a 6-6, six, six, tavern 3, again, it's a battle cry, single effect, but again, you can double up with Bran. Give a minion plus one health for each health your hero is missing. So Patrick has 55 health. You can be missing a lot of that. And you can buff something. The golden one's plus two for each. You basically can turn any minion you want into a health juiced up um, an island battle master. I think that's really cool. How good? I don't know. Pyramid. Remember, Pyramid on our, on our uh, hero tier list is currently the worst hero in the game, sitting at 10 armor. We'll have his armor deleted. And instead of having armor or a good battlegrounds buddy gets whatever this is when a different friendly minion gains health this gains it too no minion type tavern three buddy jesus wag toggle again a pretty bad hero whenever you play a minion of a type you don't control trigger your hero power. Hero power is give a friendly minion of each type plus one, plus one. It's not bad, but it it's kind of like a light fang replacement, but it's a tavern four. I think it moves wag toggle up a little bit, but not any significant amount. Ragnaros gets Lucifron. Tavern four, your end of turn effects trigger twice. That's pretty cool, but is it worth a minion slot? Probably if you're playing like choice minions that are hard to buff, but that's really going to be highly dependent on the minion types in the game that you're playing. Rack and issue. There we go. It's, <coughs> excuse me. It's a 3-5. At the end of your turn, give a random friendly minion stats equal to your tavern tier. Um, that's basically plus 6, plus 6. If you are, plus 12, plus 12, you have the golden one if you're on Tavern 6. And you probably are on Tavern 6 when you have the golden one. Is plus 12, plus 12 every single turn worth a slot on the board? In my opinion, yeah, maybe, maybe. It's okay. Reno gets one of the worst ones, Senior Tomb Diver. Make your rightmost minion golden. The golden version of this is not permanent. This is not permanent. The golden version is not permanent. The golden version is your rightmost two minions. I don't think a lot needs to be said. Really bad. Scabs. 
At the start of your turn, add your next opponent's buddy to your hand. So you get a lot of cards. That's pretty cool. Some of those buddies are like, you know, 6-6 six, six minions, 7-7 seven, seven minions. Uh, if you're playing the same guy again and again, maybe you can get a golden version. The thing is, a lot of buddies significantly synergize with the hero power of the hero that they're on. But in any case, you still get a gold. So honestly, I think it's pretty good. Shutterwalk gets Muxlinger. After you play a minion, add a random battle cry minion to Bob's Tavern. Oh boy. That's going to get really crazy. That's going to get really crazy. <laughs> Silas, after you buy a minion with Dark Moon Ticket, you gain one gold this turn only. It's just a little bit of an econ boost. I think it's very weak. Synergosa gets Thawed Champion. At the end of your turn, add a random frozen minion from Bob's Tavern to your hand. I guess that's pretty good because you can single target freeze something. So if you single target freeze it, you just get the card that you want. So this is like a three gold advantage, but, and there's a bit of a you know caveat here, it has to be on your final tavern. So it's not necessarily exactly what you want. Uh, and you're not able to use it on the turn that you get it because it's the end of the turn. You'll have to use it on the next turn. So is that worth three gold? No. Is it worth two? Probably around there. But, you know, two gold every turn. It's five, seven, statted, three. That's pretty good, I'd say. Sir Finley gets Maxwell. So Sir Finley is the hero that becomes a different hero when the game begins based on uh, a few discover options. The battle cry, add, a, add the buddy of your hero power to your hand. So I'm like, oh, well, that's okay. I did actually reveal this, but I missed a few things. First of all, it's a beast, and this is not a hero that is um, uh, you know, stuck with the beast theme. You can get this hero when beasts are banned, so you can do the Hamul you know, shenanigans. Um, also, this card is in addition to the buddy. So you get an extra gold. Okay, not bad. You can get this golden to then get the second buddy golden. So you get a second golden if you can, you know, endure having this on your board for as long as you might need it. Also... It's a battle cry, so with Bran, you can get the effect multiple times, which is insane. Overall, uh, this is really crazy, but you're going to have to dictate the risk of having an open board with this on it for a while or something to get the most out of it. I don't know, but that's, that's really, really good. Captain's Crag, um, refresh your hero power. It does not reset the counter, so it's a lot of gold. Um, it's basically 10 gold. The way that you play this is you play this after you use your first hero power, and then you use your hero power again, and then you sell it. I think it's because the, the golden one is only one refresh, so you actually want to sell this one. Yes, you lose it on the golden minion, but you will have a 30 gold turn when you uh, fill up the meter to full. 30 gold turn is pretty good. Uh, a dev on my stream and in multiple other streams and I think on Twitter from Battleground said that this seems to be one of the strongest um, one of the strongest uh, heroes with the buddy system. I'm not sure I agree, but uh, maybe. Maybe. I think it's pretty strong. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's the best though. Like, compare that to Millhouse, give me a break, right? There's no way. Anyway, Sneed, you got a mech, and again, Sneed is not tied to mechs. Very interesting. Hamul shenanigans once again. Uh, maybe they'll just delete Hamul. Uh, maybe they probably should, actually. Battle cry, copy of friendly minions, death rattles. Now, the death rattles, I believe, are still tied to the tavern tier of the source card, so this would always just get three drops. Sounds pretty bad, but pretty strong early game. Tamsin. Now, Tamsin is literally one of the worst heroes I've ever made. 
Uh, and she has tons of armor, which doesn't have anymore. You'd imagine she gets a really powerful buddy, am I right? Am I... Oh. No! She does not. Tavern 3, and trust me, Tamsin is not one of the first heroes to get a Tavern 3 buddy. Tamsin's probably getting this around Tavern 4 buddy timing. After a friendly minion dies, gain its attack. Uh, yeah. So, the idea is that the minion that you sacrifice with your hero power will trigger on this. The thing is, if you play Tamsin, you don't actually use your hero power. Your hero power costs gold. The hero power is only for a late game push. So if you don't use your hero power, this is a 0-12. With no minion type. Oh my goodness. Tavish is one of the new heroes, uh, and he's actually one of the best new heroes. It's a zero cost hero power, and it deals one damage, then two, then three, then four. It scales up constantly. And you basically choose a parameter of what you want to hit. Uh, leftmost, uh, highest health, lowest health, rightmost. Uh, overall, Tavish is a fantastic hero. Uh, it was played many times in the event, and I would say that he is fantastic. Might even be a tier one hero. I would say no less than a tier two hero. His uh, buddy is also fantastic. It is a beast, and he is not stuck to the beast minion typing, so you get the Hamul shenanigans once again with Tavish. Um, after your hero power fires, give adjacent minion stats equal to the damage dealt. Um, if you have Terragosa, those stats are permanent. So uh, Tavish might not be that good if dragons are not one of the minion types, but if dragons are in and beasts are not in, I would be surprised if Tavish is not a tier one hero. Tess, Hunter of Old, at the start of your turn, add your last opponent's buddy to your hand. No minion types, 6 4, more gold generated. Again, not a lot of those will be useful, but I don't know. That's all right. I think, I think you play Tess only if you like crazy shenanigans and. Tess is not good, this buddy is not that good, but this buddy fuels the people that would play Tess because they want crazy shenanigans because this is more crazy shenanigans. So you know what, I'm all for it. Curator gets unbelievably strong, buddy. Um, like, look at this. So Curator, the only hero that might be slightly stronger than Curator in the early game is Millhouse. And Curator gets another amalgam. And it's a tavern two, three, three. Like, you, whenever your amalgam gains stats, this gains them too. It doubles any buffs you have. It's another amalgam for the late game. You get it right away. The only person that might get a faster buddy is Millhouse out of all of them. Okay? So you get it super fast. The golden version of this, it gets the stats twice. So if you're playing like a brand build with like some Murlocs and you're using like Murloc buff effects. So let's say you get like plus two health and then you have brand. So it does like plus two health twice. It's plus four health, right? So how would that work? So if you have a golden one and you will because it's tavern, you'll get golden one right away. It'll hit your amalgam. So your amalgam gets four health. Not bad. This would get four health because it's on your board. It's also a Murloc. It's an amalgam, so this gets four health. Not bad. But this also gets four health because your amalgam got four health when it's golden twice. So it actually gets twelve health. Let me just, let me just clarify. This is going to be a possibly above Terragosa level threat in terms of a stat pile. Okay. The amount of stats that this is going to receive is going to be unbelievable. <laughs> It'll be poison or bust, basically. Great, Akazemzrak. Three cost, five, three. Death Rattle, put a random secret into the battlefield. Uh, this is actually game breaking if it includes Ice Block, and not good if it does not include Ice Block. And I believe it does not include Ice Block. Actually, maybe there's some shenanigans you can do. Maybe you can get like multiple two, three poisonous doing like macaw builds or something. I don't know. There's probably, this probably going to be a YouTube video in the works. Arphus, reborn. Your other reborn minions summon an extra copy after dying. It's a beast. It's also a 4 3 tavern 2, 
and Lich King is very strong early on. So Lich King is going to be even stronger early on. The Beast thing gives you the opportunity for Hummel shenanigans. There's just not a lot of things will reborn. And I don't think you'd play Lich King unless Beasts were in. Because the best reborn cards in the game are Beasts. So that whole Hamul angle on it kind of goes away. Still, though, that's a pretty good card. Rat King gets Pigeon Lord. Uh, two for a three, four. Your refreshes cost zero, while Bob's Tavern doesn't have the minion of your hero power. Seems pretty good, but I doubt it's enough to really move Rat King up very much. Ticketus 6-6, six, six, discover a Darkmoon prize from the most recent prize turn. Now, the tavern tier of this doesn't really matter because you're going to want to use it after turn 4 or after turn 8 to have any real significance. Uh, Ticketus is also not a very good hero, so it's it's really tough to gauge this one. Um, I think I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I don't think it'll move Ticketus up that much, but it's not bad. Gallowix. 6-3 Battlecry, give a minion plus one plus one for each gold you spent this turn. So if you're playing pirates with multiple hoggers and you're using the firewall disconnect exploit that somehow is still being used by most players at high MMR, this is unbelievably good. And if you're not, it's okay. Vandar is one of the new heroes. His hero power is copy a friendly... Uh, sorry, choose a friendly minion. It copies the health of your highest health minion for next combat only. It costs zero, so it's a pretty good hero power. His card is Avenge 2. Give your minions plus one health permanently. I feel like, uh, much like Drek'thar or whatever it is, it's just a low power level here. Vol'jin. At the end of your turn, adjacent minions copy this minion's attack. Wait, but it only has eight attack. Does it now? End of turn means those buffs are permanent. So if you're playing with like the Chroma Wing and you get like 200 attack, you can put that 200 attack onto Master Gadrin because you're playing Vol'jin, and then you can give that 200 attack buff on all of your other cards forever. It sounds really good. Zarella is the last. And certainly not the least, and I would even say one of the best. Baby Elec, after you play a minion with uh, attack equal to its health, gain plus two, plus two. Um, the thing is, with Zyrella, there's a few things. You do end up buying cards that have same attack as health all the time. This is a Tavern 2 um, buddy. And Zyrella is super strong early, so you're going to get it one of the fastest buddies out of out of the whole lobby. You're going to scale it really fast. It is a beast. There's not that many good beasts in like Menagerie builds. This is a very good beast because it's going to have enormous stats. And if beasts are banned, you can do the Hamul shenanigans. Now, I know I've mentioned that a number of times, but I do want to mention it for Zyrella that not all Hamul shenanigans are created equal. Because in Zarella's case, she's going to have a bunch of random 1, 2s, and 3s that are 2, 2s all over the place. If you power level to 6, which you can do very quickly with Zarella. And the baby Elec, which is going to be like a 40-40 absolute unit. So in order to get that juicy Hamul, you have to sell the rest of your board. For Zarella, that is effortless. Because with Zarella... Almost the entirety of the power in your board, if you're power leveling, is in the one card you're actually going to keep. So pulling that play, you're not actually going to lose a lot of the games after you pull it off. It makes it's the most powerful um, Hamul, you know, BS synergy, whatever you want to call it. So that's that, I believe. Right, we're going back to AFK. Oh no, there's there's more heroes. Oh, there's more heroes. Wait, what? Oh, right. There's letters after X. Okay, well, might as well review those. <laughs> All right. Baby Ashraj, whenever you summon a minion of your current tavern tier, give it plus four, plus four. So summon includes playing as well. So um, 
that's pretty good of a booster. It helps you power level, and Yashar is very strong if you power level. That's actually a very well done one, I would say. Accolade of Yog saron Spin the wheel of Yog saron Oh, no. Okay, there's like an infographic for this. Okay, there's here's here's what you need to know. Is it good? No. Um, is it cool? Ah. So you guys know there's been a wheel of Yog saron in multiple game modes, and there's always been that one option that is throw pyroblasts until someone dies. Remember that one? It's like a 5% chance. Well, there is a 5% chance on this wheel of Yog saron as well. And you know what it does? It throws out like 4-4 four, four buffs until it hits either Bob or Yog. This is terrible. All right, Ysera. It's like your dragons have plus three, plus three. Um, this is pretty good. I don't think the effect is that good because Ysera is like no stats, no stats. Terragosa with 400, 400 divine shield. No stats. Another Terragosa with 400, 400 divine shield. Nadina, no stats. And maybe a Razor Gore that's like a 30, 30. Okay, so this, in terms of what it does, it didn't change anything. Um, it just kind of like keeps Ysera with the mediocre power level of all the other heroes getting buddies. But what it does do is very important is you get a dragon for free pretty early on. Uh, and that's really important because if you're doing the whole Ysera thing where you try to get like Terragosa and the promo drakes, you usually are not buying random dragons as you're trying to acquire those. And this is a dragon, so it's going to help you kickstart the build because you get the minion, you get a few extra stats on the first dragons that you buy, and it's an extra dragon you don't have to buy in order to have a full board of dragons to scale up to Terragosas. So, I was going to say fortunately, but actually unfortunately, um, this is going to fuel the current and pretty lame strategy of playing Ysera. Zephyrs. Is there more Zs? Okay. Okay. Act actual last one. Wait, what? Oh, there it is. Firez. Firez. This thing. Uh, Zephyrs is not tied to elementals, so you get the Hamul shenanigans action once again. Um, it's a tavern 3 for a 3-3, three, three, which is pretty low. Uh, it's a battle cry, so it's a singular effect, but you have the option for a brand to double it. Discover a plain copy of a minion that you have exactly one of. Um, and I'd be surprised if it can discover itself. I, it's probably just collectible cards. Uh, so probably not full clarity on that one. I did not see anyone playing this, so I don't have full clarity on it. But I imagine it cannot discover itself because that would like literally break the game completely because it would go infinite if you have Bran and just keep selling it and infinite gold. and Yeah. Anyway, um, the idea is that, you know when you get a good card with Zephyrs and you really want a second one? Bam! That's your second one. So, is that good? Yeah, I think it's alright. Is it really good? Nah. And there's 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 a lot of really good with, with the buddy system. So, watch out for that. Uh, it's going to be a big stream on Tuesday with uh, this patch releasing. We're just going to try all the crazy shit. So, make sure you come in and tune into the stream. Twitch.tv um, slash NL underscore Crip. As always... Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.